Do you need help protecting your finances as you enter retirement? David Dickens of KC Financial Advisors has got you covered. Welcome to the Cover Your Assets KC podcast. Welcome to another edition of the Cover Your Assets KC podcast. I'm Walter Storholt alongside David Dickens. He is, of course, the president and wealth advisor at KC Financial Advisors, based in Overland Park, but serving you Kansas City area and beyond at CoverYourAssetsKC.com. Dave, we've got a great episode on the way today, but before we dive into all of that, we're recording this right before July 4th. You got any big July 4th plans as we officially are really, like really into summer now? Yeah, well, we're really in the summer here. This is going to be, we're, we're just kind of busting into the dog days of 100 degree heat index, Ooh. which isn't very good. But at least the air temperature is, you know, kind of like low 90s. So I'm going to play a couple rounds of golf and one with my wife, one with some friends. And um, I don't know, kind of lay low for the um, four. That'll be a three day weekend. We're closed on Monday. Yeah, so four day weekend. I don't. We're not going out of town or anything. What about you? You've got lakes and mountains and all kinds of stuff you can be doing out there. True. Although the last couple of weeks we've been kind of running, running at things pretty hardcore. So we we might actually take this four day weekend to pump the brakes a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so we we are planning to go to a Red Rocks concert on July fourth. Uh, fun. So that'll be fun. A little outdoor concert action on the evening of July 4th. Any maybe. notable name associated with that? or just Yeah. A- so our friends kind of just said, hey, we're going. And you guys should come too. Um, and I actually know the people of the band. I don't know many of their songs, but Blues Traveler. Does that ring a bell? Oh, yeah. I know them. Yeah. So that'll be fun. Uh, I was like, wow, that's a name. I know, I know, I know some songs from them. So. And I haven't been to Red Rocks, but I've seen Red Rocks. And the temperature is going to be awesome because... <laughs> Once the sun goes down in Colorado, you better have a jacket with you, even in July. Perfect. We went to one a couple, uh, like a month or two back, and I was dumb and went in shorts and a t-shirt. Not only was it cold, (laughs) it poured down rain the entire concert, so I'll be much better prepared this time around. They were actually in the news last week. There was a big hailstorm during the middle of a a concert, and 100 people were injured. Um, wow. Like a couple went to the hospital. A bunch of people were posting pictures and videos of all the welts they had on their arm. It was <laughs> an insane pop-up storm that dropped all this hail. So, Well, be careful out there, Walter. Yes, yeah, so let's, let's, let's get some good weather. So We seem to be out of the stormy pattern that we were in, so hopefully we'll be in good shape. But. Linda and I went out to a Doobie Brothers concert here at one of our outdoor venues a couple weeks ago. Nice. I bet and that was a good show. It was a really good show. And anytime you're booking an outdoor concert in Kansas City in the summer, you just better have your fingers crossed. Well, we got a 80 degree evening mm. with a, no humidity and a nice little breeze. And so it ended up being a really, really fun concert and a beautiful weather evening. So Isn't that perfect? I feel like yeah. we're going to have a show coming up soon, David, where we don't talk about anything financial. We just spend the whole episode talking about, like, I don't know, favorite travel places, best concerts. We'll just do like a best <laughs> of show where we talk about our favorite things, and that'll just be the that'll be the show. There we go. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll put that. We'll put a pin in that and come back to it. Uh, no, let's get into the uh, the meat and potatoes of today's subject, and uh, and then we'll get on with the holiday and all that excitement. Um, are clients saving too much for retirement? And folks, David sent me this headline. I looked at it and I had to kind of do the do the thing where you rub your eyes a little bit and blink real hard and look again. And I was like, what in the world kind of headline is that? How can people save too much for retirement? And uh, it sounds like you were reading a study or an industry publication type article um, and you kind of came by this concept and uh, it got you thinking. And so I'm intrigued to see where where this one goes today. Yeah, so the setup here, first of all, too much is is a relative term. And, you know, if the goal is leaving a big pot of money behind for your heirs or for charities or whatever, well, then no amount is too much. But if the goal is not to run out of money in retirement, then keep listening uh, because that's what this uh, podcast episode is about. So the study I was reading, it was in, um, I saw it in Advisor Perspectives. It's a it's an online newsletter for advisors, and so our clients, my, our listeners would never see this, but it, it, it focuses on a study by Rand Corporation with data from a, almost a decade-long study by the University of Michigan. It looked at 4,000 households, age 65 and over. And what it found was, the, the, the study was about trying to either affirm or disavow the way that a whole lot of advisors models 
work. So if you're putting together a plan with your advisor, it's probably going to show that your uh, expenses are going to inflate by maybe two or three percent a year forever. And what that means is you need a big pot of money to cover that inflated expense account that you're going to have for your 30 or 35 years of retirement. And this study said, you know, is that really true? And just to cut to the bottom line of what the study found, it found that single households actually reduce their spending one and a half percent a year during their retired years. And married households actually reduce their spending by 3.1% per year. The more you have, the bigger your pot of money is, the bigger percentage of reduction in your expenses that happens over time. So that was the premise upon uh, which the article was written, kind of to say um, your projections are probably wrong as to how much you're going to spend in retirement. So take a hard look is the, is the, was the takeaway for this. And I thought that would make a good podcast because I know I know a lot of people that come in my office and consequently I'm extrapolating to a lot of our listener base probably doesn't have a real plan in place, but they have a plan in their mind as to how it's all going to work out. And what we want to do is take apart that plan a little bit and say, how does this Michigan study by Rand Corporation, how would that affect your plan if you actually set one up? So that's where we're going. That's great. Uh, great setup there, David. So I guess my first question out of all of that would be, if we're talking about too much, it leads me to think of the word enough. So how would somebody listening to today's show know what enough is? We have listeners that are working still. We have listeners that are already retired. If you're already retired, well, then you have to work with what you have. But if you're still working, then this is going to be really helpful to you to figure out at what point am I done working and work has become optional because they already have a big enough asset pot to cover what I believe I'm going to need in expenses. So how do you know whether enough is enough is you start with the expenses that you're going to have in retirement. And so hopefully that's not you sitting at your dining room table saying, well, I think about six grand a month is what I'm going to need in retirement. Hopefully you have a more detailed plan that shows your key expenses and how they're going to change over time. So you've got your expense component and then you just subtract the amount of income that you're going to have that is what I'm going to loosely call guaranteed income. So social security, a pension, and any annuities that you have that are going to start paying you lifetime income. Well, you you subtract that from the expenses that you're going to have. And the the amount that comes out of that is the dollar amount that is going to, of, of income that you're going to need, that's going to be required to come from your savings, your IRAs, your 401ks, any non-IRA monies, maybe inheritance or a brokerage account you've set up that you've added to. But that's the basic starting point as to how you'll know whether you have enough. I think that's really interesting to hear that kind of uh, thought process to that question of what's enough. So it's a simple enough sounding formula, David, but uh, it does have some more moving parts, I'm guessing, under the surface. Yeah, so so that's where the complication comes in. Obviously, your income is, well, maybe it's not obvious. Your income has a lot fewer moving parts, your guaranteed income. So Social Security has a cost of living increase. And when I'm doing projections, I'm usually using maybe a 1.5% cost of living inflation increase. Now, if you look over the last couple of years, it's been way more than that. But historically speaking, 1.5% to 2% is probably a nice conservative and realistic number. Your annuity, if you have an annuity, it probably does not have a cost of living increase, nor does your pension. Now, if you're a Missouri teacher, you do have a cost of living increase. But if you're a Kansas teacher or a whole lot of most corporations that you earned a pension from, that is not going to grow over the years. So inflation is going to eat away at those two sources of your guaranteed income, annuity and pension. And your Social Security is going to be the only thing that has a cost of living increase, going to go up with inflation. Now your expenses <laughs> are going to go up significantly linked to inflation. And that's the piece that is really unknowable uh, as far as how much of your expense is going to be in the future. And that's where a more detailed plan 
is going to be super important to determining if your nest egg is enough. All right, we're talking again about this too much uh, for retirement. Is my nest egg enough? Are we saving too much for retirement? Looking at this through a different lens, and uh, it sounds like expenses in retirement really become the key driver of how much you'll need to save for retirement, kind of just basing off of the formula you're going over, David. Yeah, exactly. And so so that's where the more the detail part of the plan really comes into place. So th- there are these, you can read a lot of high level articles that would say, well, if you're still working, you're probably going to need 75 to 100% of your work income in retirement. My experience is that if you earn 50 to $100,000 a year, that's probably correct. But if you earn 300 to 400 to 500,000 a year, well, that's probably not correct. You are very likely to need less because your your expenses, it's pretty hard to spend that kind of money in retirement. Not impossible. I have a couple of clients that do, but the vast majority just can't spend that much amount of money in retirement. So, So what changes? What are the big changes in your expenses in retirement? Well, one of them is housing. Hopefully your mortgage goes away. But sometimes it doesn't, but it's it's winding down over that period of time. You may choose to downside, downsize your living quarters, and that could cause you to eliminate your mortgage or significantly reduce your mortgage. Another thing that a lot of plans don't include is if you're a big contributor to your 401k at work, well, that obviously goes away when you're not working anymore because you can't contribute to a retirement plan. So sometimes that's 10 or 20% of what you earn that is not going to be an expense in retirement. Uh, What about taxes? Well, high earners are almost certainly to have their tax bracket go down in retirement. Uh, Lower earners, uh, maybe not so much, but at least in the early years of retirement, that should be the case. So you're going to spend less on taxes. You're probably going to either, either discontinue or way pare back the amount of life insurance that you have because you're not worried about, you know, what losing your job might, how that might affect your family, because you won't have a job anymore. Uh, Clothing, cars, uh, remodeling of houses, all those types of expenses that you have when you're working, those are going to be either gone or significantly reduced. So income is pretty easy to project. Expenses is pretty difficult to project, but that's why it's so important to actually project it in some granular detail so that you can determine, is my pot of assets enough to cover my expenses during retirement? Things like, uh, so when we build a, when we build a plan, each of the categories has an, has a, an inflation factor to it. So if you have a fixed rate mortgage, well, that isn't going to go up over time let's say you carry a mortgage into retirement, but your real estate taxes, your insurance, those probably are going to go up. Your health care is going to go up and probably not at one and a half percent a year. Probably we usually build in maybe a four or five percent inflation factor for that. But some of your expenses like travel for the first five or seven or 10 years of somebody's retirement, well, we have a pretty hefty number in there for a lot of our clients. But after they turn 80, that could go almost to zero because even when, when you're 65 and you're thinking, well, 80 is not that far off, I might continue to travel really hard. My experience with clients is that that just doesn't happen. So once you get over 75 or definitely over 80, well, that big component of your expense bucket kind of goes away. And so you don't have to worry about funding those, nor do you have to worry about funding the inflation adjusted cost of those. So those are all things that go into, I think, so when I read this University of Michigan study by Rand Corporation, that made total sense to me that that retirees expenses actually go down over the years of their retirement. The one thing that we always build into a plan that would be adverse to this trend is if one or both of you in a household need long-term care for how long and how much is it going to be? Well, so that's a really important thing to build into a, maybe not to your base plan, but into a what if to say, if we need that kind of thing, now how big does our nest egg need to be? So that sounds 
it sounds simple on the surface. It sounds more complicated when you unpack it. And that's because if you want a real plan that is going to give you the confidence that your money's going to last to 100. Or maybe you say, Dave, I don't need my money to last to 100. 90 will be just fine. Okay. But you want to have a high confidence level that you're good until 90. And I've got people that say, well, I want to leave at least a half a million dollars to my kids. Okay, we'll build that into your plan too. And then you want a high level of confidence that you're going to be covering all of your expenses and leaving a nest egg behind. It all works into how big of a nest egg do I need based on the expenses that I expect and the income, other income that I know I'm going to have. The supplemental income is going to come from my nest egg. It's a complex calculation, and the less money you have, the less well you've done for yourself, kind of the easier the calculation is because you have way fewer moving parts because you don't have as many choices to make in your retirement. But if you've done pretty well for yourself, and, and if you've done famously well for yourself, well, then the calculation is pretty simple because there's virtually no way you're going to earn out of money. It's those, it's that big chunk of people in the middle that have done pretty darn well for themselves. And they have this concern about running out of money. That's the group that needs a really good plan for their retirement. I usually refer to that and publications in my industry refer to that as maybe people that have saved a half a million to two and a half million for their own retirement. Those are the people that tend to be most concerned about the future, about possibly running out of money. And they need a really good uh, plan to make sure to give them the confidence that they're not going to run out of money. Mm, that's really helpful, David. Great breakdown of all of this. And so if, uh, if people want to kind of figure out, you know, hey, this lifestyle that I want, and uh, they're, they're estimating these assets and also the expenses, all those things together, you're, you're helping them pull together all those pieces of the puzzle. Exactly. And so that's, that's where, you know, I often refer to your plan. And the, it's always plan with a capital P because every client is different. Some clients, we need a pretty simple plan because they've either not done very well or they've done famously well. But if you've done pretty darn well for yourself, that's where the, the plan needs to be really well thought out. And you need to have some ability to run some what ifs to say, well, if this happens, then what happens to my plan? And if you're still in good shape, eh, then you're confident in retirement and you go about, you, you see your accounts whittling down some over the years because that's all part of the plan. Uh, so if you, if you find yourself in that, middle spot and you don't have, first of all, a written plan, <laughs> second of all, a, a relatively complex plan from an expense standpoint and an inflation standpoint, then I'd encourage you to either find somebody like us who does that for you or find a, a really good model that for a super do-it-yourself or that you can do it for yourself and just make sure that you have a high level of confidence that the next 20 or 30 or 35 years is going to work out in a satisfactory fashion for you. Oh, that's fantastic. And if you have some further questions about this and you see all of these important pieces of the puzzle, wondering how they all come together uh, for your particular situation, always helpful to have that one-on-one -on -one talk with David and the team at Cover Your Assets KC. And you can do that uh, at KC Financial Advisors. You can do that by going to the website, CoverYourAssetsKC.com. You can also call 913-317-1414. Maybe the conversation starts with just a simple question you have on your mind. Maybe you've got 100 questions you need to run by, and you can have a, a deeper conversation with David about those things as well, all part of the planning process. Um, but uh, if you've got some question marks still surrounding your financial plan, well, make sure you get on the right track and uh, get some answers to those things. Again, CoverYourAssetsKC.com or call 913-317-1414. All that contact info is in the description of today's show to make it easy for you. David, thanks for walking us through all of this and, and the consideration that this uh, article inspired today. And uh, we'll look forward to checking in with you again uh, in two weeks, taking next week off for the July 4th uh, holiday, and then we'll be back at it after that. 
Yeah. Enjoy your fourth. Stay cool. You won't have any problem. I'll try to stay cool. And I'll talk to you in a couple of weeks. Sounds good. Thanks, David. I'm Walter. Thanks for joining us, everybody. And we'll see you next time on Cover Your Assets, KC. Investment advisory services offered through ChangePath LLC, a registered investment advisor. ChangePath LLC and KC Financial Advisors are separate companies.